The Wood Whisperer is proud to be sponsored by Powermatic and Type Bond. If you've been watching The Wood Whisperer for a while, you might recognize this project. This was the original drill charging station, which was really just um, fancy wood and two shelves. I did use it for my drills, though. I kept the drills on the bottom, chargers on the top, but eventually this design just became limiting. I got more drills, I had more chargers, and I always had this issue pulling the batteries out of the charger. It's difficult to do with one hand, actually impossible to do with one hand unless something secures the charging cradle in place. So this is what I came up with. Uh, I've got a slope back here so that I can actually come out to a full 10 inches where the drills go in. This allows me to keep my bits in place. Sometimes I don't like to take them out. So with a bit chucked in there, I have plenty of room to get the drill where it needs to go. I have space for five. You can make it shorter or longer if you need to. And I have a slope going back because I just don't need as much depth on the top. And I think a lower profile looks a little bit better. On the sides, that's where the chargers are. And I even have a little clip screwed into the top that prevents those chargers from moving upward. They can't move at all. So removing batteries is a piece of cake. All right, so the whole thing took me about three hours from design to applying the first coat of finish. So it's a pretty quick build. Let's get to it. I'm using three quarter inch Baltic birch for this project. It has 13 layers and is incredibly stable and strong. Best of all, the outer layer of veneer is actually reasonably thick, so it's forgiving for those of us who really like to sand. The parts are all cut to size, and then I set up for the dados. I use a piece of scrap to get a snug fit. After sanding the shelves, they should fit perfectly. Now I can cut the dados into sides, moving the fence as needed for each new position. The actual location of the dados isn't critical, but what is critical is that we put them in the same place on both side pieces. Make sure you keep good, consistent downward pressure since the dado stack likes to lift the workpiece as it cuts. Now for the drill slots on the bottom shelf. My measurements are based on Milliwake drills, so you might just want to test this layout if you have a different brand. I found a 2 inch spacing works well with 2 inches between the drills. Keep in mind that a quarter inch on each end goes into a dado, so start your layout a quarter inch in from the ends. The bandsaw works pretty well for these stopped cuts. With a fence set for each position, I could flip the workpiece and make the cut on the other end. By the way, if you don't have a bandsaw, a jigsaw will work just fine. Just be sure to use a fine tooth blade with lots of teeth to avoid excessive tear out. To help cradle the drills, I'll add a deep chamfer on the top surface of the shelf. I found that the drills sit more comfortably if there's a rounded profile where the chuck rests, so I'll sand in a little round area using the spindle sander. Don't have one? Buy one. Or you could just try a round rasp. To draw the taper, make a line at the bottom of the top dado, 6 inches in from the back. Then draw a straight line to the top of the second dado. After cutting both pieces at the bandsaw, I'll gang them together to make the profile consistent on both pieces. And now, I'll make thousands of hand tool woodworkers cringe by using my jack plane on plywood. Feel the burn! To cut the bevels on the top two shelves, I'll drop them into dados, flush with the back, and then draw a pencil line at the front edge. I'll bevel the saw blade by eye and then make a quick test cut just outside of my line. This allows me to make a quick adjustment and then move the fence to the final position. I actually neglected to record this cut, but it's just as well because I don't have a zero clearance insert for this odd bevel angle, so it's probably for the best that no one sees it. Now we can glue this thing up. All we need is some grade A top choice type on glue and some clamps. At the back, I'll add two cleats that'll help me attach the unit to the wall. The fit is snug and there's plenty of glue, but I'll drive a few brad nails for additional reinforcement. 
a few screws wouldn't be a bad idea either. If there are any discrepancies in the front, you can smooth it all out with some sanding. There's really no need for edge banding on this, though you could add it if you wanted to. I find that most people actually like the look of Baltic birch edges. But it's still veneered plywood, so make sure you sand all of the sharp edges into a chamfer or a roundover, otherwise they're likely to split and tear over time. This is shop furniture, so the finish can be anything you want. Shop furniture is a great place to practice something new. I'm using water-based poly, two coats brushed on with a light sanding in between coats. An oil finish would work too, but it would make the birch pretty yellow. The water-based finish keeps the birch whiter, but adds just a little hint of color. Now I'll carefully measure for screws that'll hold my chargers in place. On top of the second charger, I'll install a small cleat that helps prevent the chargers from coming loose when removing the batteries. Now I can mount this bad boy on the wall. It's long enough that it shouldn't be too difficult to find two studs. Of course, there's a third stud that does the work. Am I right, ladies? Let's load it up. So the only thing left to do is a little bit of wire management. And I'll probably bundle the wires together, put a surge protector under here, and then just have everything kind of self-contained. You won't even be able to see the wires. And I'll have an easy way to turn it on and off if I want to cut power to these guys at some point. Uh, so this is one of my favorite types of projects, a very small time investment, but the organization you get out of it just makes life in the shop a whole lot easier. So hopefully you'll have time to build one yourself. Thanks a lot, take care.